Hello, Matt Elliott here. Hi, Alan Smith here. Hey guys, Ian Hume here. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV for all the latest Leicester City news and information. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels for the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Come on, you foxes! The Leicester Till I Die shop is now open. For all your Leicester Till I Die merchandise, visit the Leicester Till I Die shop at our website. They have blown their rivals away. They have blown us all away in truth. Premier League champions 2016. The amazing Leicester City. But in 49, 61, 63 or 69 when they reach the final. But the class of 2021 have delivered. Leicester City are FA Cup winners at last. And are history makers at Wembley. Leicester to my die TV. Your first choice for everything Leicester City. Tune in and join in now. Right, Chris. All right, how are we feeling? Oh, what a day. Everything's going wrong tonight, I tell you. I don't know if the link is working to Facebook. It doesn't look like it is, but I have put a separate link in there as well. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know what is going on. It's, um, it's not the 13th today, is it? <laughs> it should be. I do. It was the 13th on Sunday, wasn't it, yesterday? Oh, how are we feeling? Well, we didn't predict that. In fact, we didn't predict much of the week. It was a little bit embarrassing. This is Leicester Till I, Till I Die TV. We are waiting for Steve Linex. We're going to start without him. He may well be delayed at work. He does know it's tonight and, and it's been sent the link, but bless him. He may well be uh, still extending somebody's house. Uh, it's Leicester Till I Die TV. This is where you can find us. And if you want to listen to us on Catch Up, we are on all the main um all the main podcast platforms, Google, Apple, iTunes. I need to get a new set of teeth in, Amazon and Spotify as well. This is where you can find it. Watch us on Listen on your favourite podcast platform or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. Yes, uh, it was a little bit embarrassing on after the last show. Embarrassing more for one person than the other. Mm. Who was it? We'll find out after this. <laughs> It's the Leicester Till I Die Premier League Prediction Show with Chris, Brad and regular special guest, ex-Leicester City player Steve Linex. Like and subscribe now. Brad will have to do his Jesus bit and try and produce Steve from somewhere. <laughs> Good evening, Brad. How are you? It didn't work. I gave it a go. Uh, I'm, I'm all right, mate, to be honest with you. Um, just considering what happened <laughs> yesterday, I'm not actually yeah. uh, not actually too bad, to be fair. To be honest with you, I mean, we've we've discussed it a lot. We've had the review shows, uh, the FA Cup review show. We had the post match show. If you want to go on to the BBC iPlayer, you can go to the Football News Show. Go to today's uh, thing. It's only about a 10-minute show. You will find some handsome bugger from Leicester talking about what's gone wrong this season. And I, I, know you, 
I'm going to say, I know you're looking at that and thinking, oh, it must be Brad. <laughs> it isn't. It's, uh, it's, it's moi. It is, it is the one and only uh, on the BBC iPlayer, uh, I say the, the football news show. And what I th and I'm not going to go through it here because you've got to go and watch it. But what I think of uh, Leicester City season. It also, there's a little interesting bit about Man United as well. But uh, we'll leave that for everybody to to watch and enjoy. Um, I've got it ready. Brad. Serious man, you cannot be serious. But I have to. I've got a confession, my son. Okay, he's been with you and all that. You are forgiven for your sins. Thank you. You don't know what it is yet. I actually went for Norwich to beat Wolves in the FA Cup. Hey, so did I. I think no. I wrote my comments. I, I did the same, mate. I, I, three wins on the balance for Norwich. I don't think they enter the John McEnroe anymore. They, they, they look to have completely changed side. Yeah, exactly. 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 Anyway, we're going to do the predictions. Feel free to join in um, down the comments. The comments, because we've been having a, a few bots pop in every now and again and uh, try and ruin the chat, uh, I've actually limited this one to subscribers only. So what you're going to do is go and click on YouTube, uh, Lesson to Die TV, click on the subscribe, and then you'll be able to sort of join in with the predictions. But, Brad, let's have a look, shall we? Um, right. This was last week. Now, you, Brad, are on 87 at the end of last week. I am on 83. Steve is on 75. The week before that, Brad was on, oh, 87. <laughs> yeah, I had a bit of a shocker, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I only got two points. <laughs> got 81. And Steve, he, I mean, Steve got three in fairness. But, I mean, to me, I don't know about you, mate, this sums the season up. Yeah, it really does. It yeah. really does. If you, if you look back over every week, we've got some, you know, we've got some drop points. We've been making up points on some shot predictions. Uh, at, yeah. we've, we've been at the pinnacle of this league. And then this week came along. It's been the most cursed week of my life supporting Leicester. <laughs> Hasn't it just? I yeah. mean, let, just to quickly... Um... Quickly go through, and I don't know. Oh, where's my where's my mouse gone? Oh, it's there. Yep. So there you can see eighty seven the week before. Um, we are not counting the 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 games called off, by the way. But I think like all the games, I think that being shown this week, most of those are ones that have been called off anyway. But Brad, I mean, this is a first. I'm sorry, mate. It is a first. You did not get one. <laughs> yeah, see, see, see. What happened was, is, is I had a board meeting, and I said, Brad, Brad, mate, look, everybody keeps struggling to keep up with you, and you're outside the box thinking, and you're outside knowledge, and your contacts. Give them a chance to catch up, and then this week we'll, we'll reverse it with a smashing ten out of ten. And I said, all right, that's I will do. So we we let you get back into it. You're still, still five points behind, and still, still a whopping eight points behind if you're Steve, who isn't even here to add to his points tally. So. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to make amends of it because I can't. I've at least got to get one right in twenty. He says, watching for the zero out of twenty. Yeah, yeah. We 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 will see. Um, Terry, good evening, sir. Uh, is Steve coming on? We don't know. We hope so. Um, and, and I can't. I can't. I'm struggling to see everybody's comments here, but I'm hoping he is. Um, he's not responding to the text, but he does know it's tonight. I did speak to him the other day, so fingers crossed, maybe, Terry. Maybe Brendan's already sacked him for a, a little sportsmanlike behaviour of turning up late. <laughs> Probably. Um, why isn't my anything working on my thing tonight? I don't know. Um, what is going on here? Um, do, 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 do. Just bear with me one second, guys. It's all um, going wrong. It at is all going point. wrong. At my, least you know my... you're a true Leicester fan. If it's all going wrong at the same time, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm struggling with the comments as well at the moment. But there we go. There we go. Let Let's see how we get on. Um, so. Yep, that's the position at the moment. We are set up, ready to go. We are playing a load of games. Um, and I don't know what's happened here. Indeed, I do know what's happened because the Burnley-Watford game was Saturday. So that has already been played. So we can't actually um, choose that one. So let's just put that like that. Yeah. 
Uh, no, I tell you what, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be a boring nil nil, mate. I'll put I'll put all eighty seven points on the line for it to be nil nil. <laughs> <laughs> if only, mate. If only that'd have been more exciting than the actual game. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Um, so I mean, this is this is the thing. The games are all over the place at the moment. But let's start. Steve, when he comes in, we'll give him a chance to catch up. Or if not, I'll uh, I'll speak to him privately and, and, and take his his, uh, his results there. Um, Newcastle host Everton. Um, I mean, this is the first game after the end of the window. Yeah. Um, so it, it does make, you know, it very interesting. Yeah, it does. Um I mean, Everton obviously got a very, very strong result in the FA Cup. I don't know the strength of Brentford's team. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what their squad depth is enough to rotate from as strong as possible lineup, but it was quite damning. Um, but Frank Lampard had to suspect to Chelsea before he was pretty much, weirdly, after a successful season, basically told, you've got to go back to the old Chelsea way and start buying 400 players yeah. and blowing out 400 new players. So maybe maybe um, a club's finally taking a chance on Lampard that's going to allow him to do it con at a continued rate. Certainly a good start to it. Um, I, I'm still not impressed by Newcastle. They they no. got a Leeds mm. they got a, a victory over Leeds which they really did need but I don't know I know it's at St James's Park but I, I I'm fancying Evan to to win this you know bloody hell interruptions technical difficulties no <laughs> Steve what else go, go <laughs> everything's going wrong mate everything's going wrong I tell you so um. Which way, which way are you going with this one? Uh, I I I'm still not impressed by Newcastle. I think no. Leeds no. were poor. Um, otherwise, on another day, I think they don't beat Leeds. Um, and I've gone. I I I think Frank Lampard has really already shown how much he's improved morale at Everton. Mm. So I'm going for an away win. I'm going Everton to, to to win this. I've got to be honest with you, young man. I'm going to agree with you there. Um. I know it's annoying, isn't it? See, see that, Chris. I scored zero points, and like, you still, you still. I know. I still, I still follow. I'll go. I'll go first. Every other. There we go. Um, yeah, but I no, I, I like. Like you say, Newcastle haven't impressed me. Yeah, they've gone out and they bought and they bought and they bought. It doesn't mean that you're going to get instant success. It can take you a while to, you know, for those players to bed in. Um, you. <laughs> Everton, I mean, it was a great win over Brentford. Yes, it was in the cup. Yes, you got the new manager bounce, but I, I just, I just, is Chris Wood going to get them the goals they need to stay up? And that is a no for me. I don't oh. think he's he, he's not signed as a twenty twenty goal a season striker, you know. So I'm going to yeah. agree with you on that. In fact, the um, only thing twenty about him was his release course fee, and that's twenty five. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Um, now then, um, West Ham Watford. So we're looking at a Watford side that um, could only draw against Burnley. That didn't do either team any good. And they really needed, uh, one of them needed to win that. Um, neither of them needed to lose it. Uh, but I mean, that's at least Roy's kept a clean sheet with that one. West Ham, they'd won three, but they'd lost two. They had a scare against Kidderminster in the cup, um, and it was a, a loss against Man United, and it was that loss against Leeds. Um, I don't know what to go for here. I'm torn. Can Watford get a draw? Um, Roy is probably a better manager for them than, than Claudio was, um, but maybe should have been brought. It may, might be too late for him. I'm going to have to go because it's at West Ham. I am going to have to go for a West Ham win. See, for me, I'd be bang on agreeing with you if Ranieri was still there because Ranieri was up the Alamo, charge at them, yeah, and pray for a miracle. Which you know, apart from the odd result here and there, they didn't really get it because they always got heavily beaten when they got beat. Um, but Roy Hodgson. You know, he did it at Palace, didn't he? And he's really yeah. frustrating to play against. He's the sort of manager 
that will get his team to dig in, work hard. And I don't think he'll be worried about the point at Burnley as much as anyone else because he'll look at a game ahead and go, OK, if we can get a point away at West Ham, then that's another point towards safety. He won't start hitting the panic button and think we need to go out and out and win every game. Um, because right now, and I know we'll get to them in a minute, and we spoke about ourselves, but there's only one team that's seeming to put a run together to get themselves out of danger. You've still got Newcastle, you've still got Burnley in there, so it's it's nothing yeah. if they can get a point. And I'm actually, you know, not not to jinx it, you know, I've got a soft spot because my granddad um, uh, for West Ham, but I think they're doing a Leicester of last season. They're throwing away games and losing games at vital times when they're not. They're, they're, they're seeming to struggle to hold their nerve when they realise they're actually genuine top five contenders, uh, even in Nile. And I'm mm-hmm. actually going to go for Watford to um, get a point. I'm going to go for a draw. I think they'll do it. Be serious, man. You cannot be serious. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I get, I do get where you're coming from. Um, I also get where you're coming from with that, to be fair. Yeah, and, and I've got to be honest with you, I, I was I was sat on the fence for a bit and deciding whether I'd fall off onto the West Ham United side. Had it been at Watford, I could probably see them getting a draw. Um, Dan, at the moment, is discussing this match on his channel, um, Turf Moor TV. He's got Mike Green from Mike Green TV on with him. Burnley, Manchester United. I'm joining the watch along for the first 45 minutes tomorrow. So no doubt I'll be bantering whoever is losing. Um, You're going first on this one, mate. How do you see this one going? You know what? For the last three or four weeks, I think a lot of fans, probably me and yourself included, have been on Prediction Show. And we've gone, oh, yeah. Amazing. Of course they're going to, you know, of course they're going to win this. There's, There's no way they don't lose to a team like this. And then, you know, the you know, Henderson channels and his David De Gea and can't save a penalty. Uh, they get some dodgy results. And you know what? Dan's probably going to start doing backflips uh, over this, but I'm going for a sneaky 1-0 Burnley. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Maybe I've just lost the plot because the I haven't got a point. I don't have the first damn clue. <laughs> maybe, maybe, mate. Maybe I'm maybe maybe I've let the, the zero get to me that much that so I'm just got a bit crazy, but I mean and, and just as Maisie, Maisie comes in and guys I am struggling to see the comments, so do bear with me um on, on the on the car. I don't know why I am not being able to see all the comments as they come in. Um let me just see what happens if I do that. You know, technology, eh? Technology. But uh, poor old Elton was doing it. Less. <laughs> he was trying about 20 times. He got kicked out and tried about 20 times to get back on. I could keep seeing him popping up. Um, Maisie, Maisie what is though she's still here, but it's, it's Burnley, isn't it? it it's, it's a horrible ground to go to in the winter. It's bloody freezing. I know I lived there for 20 years. Um, there is something... Man United are doing a bit of a Leicester at the moment. There's something wrong with both teams. And, you know, Ranjik, you know, is it, is, it, is it a case that he's come in as the, as the new general manager, but he's actually managing for a few months and the players, well, he's not going to be here next season. You know, uh, we know it. If we know it happens, look, when we won the Premier League and they, they, they got rid of Man City, got rid of Pellegrini, they just couldn't hardly win after that. Um, yeah. there is something desperately wrong at Man United. You know, Man United, as I've said recently, pre Fergie were just a, like a Chelsea. Post Fergie, they've been like a Chelsea. They win the odd thing every now and again. Fergie was brilliant, <laughs> and it's going to be a long time, I think, till they get back to that. But and call credit to Man United, it is Man United. So a manager, if it is Potticino that he's going to come to you guys, he should be wanting to come to you. Because all banter aside, Man United are a damn big club and a manager should want to come to you. Um, I am going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to do a Brad. I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. 
because I I can't. Yeah, I think it, if it was at Man United, I think they might just kind of get it. But uh, I've gone for. Uh, I'm going to go for a draw because it's at Burnley, and Man United just aren't in the um, in the game. Terry, I think has. Um, He's, he's, he's just gone in advance <laughs> of all the in advance of the, the Leicester versus Liverpool. All I can say is Spurs plus Brighton plus Forest, uh, and I can't see the rest of it, mate. I'm <laughs> sorry, what have you said here? Oh, God, I hate technology. The beach in Dubai equals the biggest Leicester loss. Was the biggest Leicester loss. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, no, it's still not working for you. 2 0 to Man United now. Well, of course, Niall. Yep, the, the, you're not biased at all, are you? But uh, but there we go. I think it will be, you know, I can see where you're coming from. And I think because it's at Burnley, I think that is what is going to um, make make the difference. Um, I have an idea. There we go. Because <laughs> I've got a new laptop, you see. And it's a small uh, screen. That's why I couldn't see. God's that. sake. You, you, you. you. You're just too used to chiseling in like you did in the Stone Age, mate, aren't you? <laughs> I thought they had when I was at school, mate, the old chalk and board. <laughs> that thing is, I can't re- I made that to make it that small now. <laughs> it was even smaller than it was. But uh, anyway, me to go for Man City Brentford, a repeat of the FA Cup. Um, it's at Man City. If they can do what they did to Brentford with like their second string, what they're going to do, you know, if they put the first string out for here, for me, I'm sorry, Brentford, I love you and I do hope you stay up. I really, really do. I want you to stay up. And I think you made, you know, great signing with Ericsson. Uh, and, I, and I just love these clubs coming up and doing well. But I can't see further than Man City for this. Would you agree? Uh, no, no. Yeah, nor can I, mate. I think, unfortunately, as much as I admire them and the way they've done their work to get into the premiership and what they've done since they've come up. I think they've maybe maybe there's a few players that have got that mentality that they've done enough to stay up and I think they're sh- suffering from Sheffield United oritis. Yes. Yes. I I agree. Uh, it's going to be a comfortable win for Man City, I'm afraid. Yeah. Now then, I'm glad you're going first with this one. Norwich, who we we were talking off screen beforehand, um I actually went for a Norwich win over Wolves in the FA Cup, as did yourself. And uh, we've obviously taken the, the we out of each other when we've, we've picked Norwich in the league, but they're on a within run of three games, um, yeah. which has given them a chance of survival, in, in fairness. But, you know, they have... You know, the teams have beaten Everton and uh, Watford. So the teams around them, and those are the games they need to be winning, as should Burnley have done or Watford at the weekend. Um, but Palace, they've won only won one in five. And that was against Norwich, believe it or not. Um, so that was obviously that, that was the first game at Palace. Uh, but, they, you know, they lost the other week to Liverpool. Which is, you know, I kind of say no, you know, you've got to kind of sometimes say, well, yeah. it's expected sort of thing. How is this one going to go? I mean... It's it's funny, isn't it? It's almost weird to consider we're, we're, we're generally talking about Norwich not automatically going back down to the uh, Championship. I mean, before Daniel Farkett was sacked, there was even Norwich fans saying they're already getting prepared for Tuesday nights uh, you know, at a wet day of Stoke. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that, you know, Smith has come in and, and proven that what he did at Villa was no fluke, uh, that he's a very good manager and can, and can hold his own at this level and can develop more. And he's getting something out of a Norwich side that never looked possible. I mean, yep. you know, it, when you're in a position like what, like the clubs like Norwich, Everton, Newcastle, Burnley, etc., are, it doesn't really, to a degree, matter what you do against the top half of the league. Probably from eight upwards, they're bonus points. If you get a good point mm. at home and, and that, and if you, you know, somehow sneak the odd win here or there, brilliant. But as long as you're beating the teams in and around you, and that, and you're picking up your points from that half of the table. You're doing a good thing, and and this is one of them. You know, Palace uh, are, are kind of stuttered a bit. Again, it seems like that great start under Vieira is is I wouldn't say petering out, but it's hmm. it's maybe with the fixture list and everything coming across that it, it it's it's kind of run them in a bit. 
um, with their squad depth. And I'm going to stick to making it an unprecedented four out of four for Norwich. I, I think Norwich will pick this one and, and, and I'm going to go for a Norwich win. Right. Well, um, let's just have a look and see. Um, no, I can't. I thought I would see how the uh, the sky betting sort of went with it. Um, is that going to be any easier? No. Uh, there's so many, to be honest with you. I remember the days when you just went in, right, so much for them to win, so much for them to win. Now it's how many changes of underwear does the goalkeeper make in the first 45 yeah. minutes? Yeah. You know. Corners at like 5, 8.5 and over and rubbish yeah. like that. I, I, Palace need to start turning the form around, as you say. You know, the bubbles burst a little bit, um, yeah. but not completely. They do need to, to, to turn it around. Norwich, it's a night game at Norwich. Um, and they'll be buzzing as well, won't they, Chris? The fans will be right behind them. They'll be buzzing. It, it, yeah. This just yeah. really gives them the impetus going into it as well for me. I th I, I'm going to go for a draw. No, no, Niall's playing some impressive games. Apparently, Norwich are going to draw and win. <laughs> and, that, that's, and, 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 and Spurs versus Leeds, it's going to be a draw. And Leeds, well, really, Spurs and Norwich getting four points, but Liverpool, Liverpool Wolves only getting three points. That's a bit handicapped, that, Niall. You can't go handicapping teams. <laughs> oh god god right let's have a look um let's try this one so the next game and i think it's probably me to go first isn't it um oh, yeah, Tottenham yeah. Hotspur versus southampton god i mean oh. tottenham did a job on brighton I, I wanted brighton to win i predicted brighton to win they did what they needed to do at least they yeah. at least they discovered how to win in the cup again after the two Chelsea games. Um I mean Tottenham 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 no one can stop them. I mean they've won three of the last five. You know they lost to um they lost to Chelsea again you know I mean that was three games in a row they've lost to Chelsea so they did need that win. Um of course they say it's at Tottenham um Southampton got a good win. I mean, they, they beat Coventry, so they're always. I'm always going to like that. Uh, yeah. But they've only won. They've won two in five. They've drawn two the last time out. I mean, they managed a good draw with Manchester City. Yeah, yeah, they um, did, and uh, and they were lucky I'm against. I'm going, to sit on, I'm going to sit on the fence again and go for another draw, and I think Southampton. Will like I say that they did well against um, uh, Man City. <laughs> Holding Man City to a draw is no mean feat. So um, I'm going for yet another draw. What about yourself, Brad? Uh, oh, this this is a difficult game because Southampton do have a knack of of, of this, don't they? You, you just think they come up against Man City and you think, oh, Frashian, it's going to be five nil, six nil. I even jokingly said it could be nine. You know, get your nine nils out. For the yeah. lads, sort of things, and then and then they, they go and put in a performance, and then and they frustrate them. And, and the thing is, if you can get yourselves organised against this Spurs side, I know what happened in that game, and people will love to remind me. They still do, even though it's like, yeah. Anyway, but we frustrated them. We limited them to shots outside the box, and and they couldn't get through. And Southampton and Mac are doing this, so I'm going to join you, Chris. I'm going to sit on the fence next to you on this one, and I'm going to say Southampton for straight Spurs and Nick a draw. But, I mean, we can clarify that you might as well put an S in the Southampton side because we know even if he doesn't make it on the show that Steve's not going to go for a draw or a, a, a Spurs no, win. No, you're quite, you're quite right there, and we will indeed, will indeed yeah. do that. Um, <laughs> makes for sense, doesn't it? It does, mate. We know it, we know what it's going to be. Um, and the, the, the odds on that on our choice there is three to one. Um, oh. with um, um, uh, a, a, a one of the, the betting companies. Although, if you do bet, be gamble aware, and when the fun stops, stop, guys. Um, yeah. but and, and there are many, many choices available. I'm doing three six five, it's a three to one for the draw. Eight to thirteen on for Tottenham, nine to two for for Spurs. 
Um, Aston Villa leads, uh, Brad. I mean, again, leads. Um, they, they started to put a couple of wins together. They beat Burnley, which was very important. Um, and the, but, uh, impressively beat West Ham. Um, and then went and lost to Newcastle. Yeah, I know. Talk about the one job but I wanted them to actually win a game. It was Newcastle because it was really, really, really funny to see the richest club in the world just suffer a little bit more. And I, yeah. I don't have any yeah. hatred towards Newcastle and their fans. I just think it'd be really funny of a club, you know, yeah. just when they finally think they're free of it. They've got a... And Gerard, sorry, at Villa, I didn't tell you what Villa had done. They won the last one, obviously, against Everton, I say obviously, but yeah. they won the last one, 1-0. One, uh, the one before that, they drew 2-2 two, two with Man United. Uh, but they lost to Brentford before that, and they lost to Chelsea um, after having beaten Norwich. So the form is like, yeah, at the moment. Yeah, a little bit hit and miss. But, mm. you know, you can only, again, going to the other one, you can only beat what's in front of you. Yeah. Or Britain's case for that game, it was you could only beat what was in the dugout. Um, uh, so, look, they, 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 they know how to score goals, and but they also seem to have a regular problem that teams seem to be having this season is they don't know how to keep them out of the net. Um, yeah. They've obviously been watching our defensive DVDs because that's why they keep conceding. So, mm-hmm. something tells me that, that this is going to end up Either it's, it's, it's literally either going to be nil nil or it's going to be like a three two or, or something like that. It's going to be like high scoring for both teams. And I'm going to say that which one, Brad? Which one? Uh, I know they're I know they're a Midlands, but they're not really a rival in my eyes. And I've never I've never really been the biggest fan of Leeds as a team. They just they disdain me a little bit. So I'm going to give the win to Villa. I'm going to say they win it. I have to agree with you. I think I think Stephen Gerrard he, he doesn't take prisoners, uh, no. and I think you know he will be giving his players a bit of a roasting after the the last few results not going really as well as they wanted, and I think they will be up for this one. And it, it is at Villa Park, and um, there is sort of like I say, there's going to be a bit of an atmosphere. Um, if Palace, Southampton, and Villa win, Leicester could be down to 14th. Um, always look on the bright side of life. Do 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 do. Um, yeah, if I'm copyrighted for that, I'd be surprised. But talking of Leicester, uh, and it's me to go first here. <sighs> Liverpool, you know, I mean, it would just be like Leicester, wouldn't it? To go out and win this, <laughs> we you know, we saw yeah. we we saw well, that we had lost against them in the in you know we'd given away the lead and we'd lost against them in the Caribou Cup and then they came to to Leicester and and we beat them. Um, you know we had a few youngsters in there and you know what that's annoying because you know when you see the youngsters that played against Watford, they played with more desire than anybody on that pitch the other day, you know, yesterday. And maybe, you know, maybe that's the problem. Maybe we should get the youngsters in again. Um, maybe, Brendan, maybe I think we've we said, Brendan is going to read the riot act to the players. And if he doesn't, then he should, I don't think he should go, but, you know, if he's not going to take responsibility and grab the ball by the, you know, balls, so to speak, <laughs> drag him kicking and screaming, we are... A, we lost to a local rival. Was I mean, had we lost, say, that to Man City, I think we'd be feeling differently today. The fact that it, oh, was, yeah. Not, yeah, it was Nottingham, they were a team below us, uh, in, in the division below us. Um, they had put Arsenal out. Leicester players, to be honest, if I was a Leicester player, and, you know, it's all very nice, um, and, you know, it's... <sighs> coming out and just saying, like, oh, yeah, we, we should have done this and we need to be a bit more passion. This is your chance. This yeah. is redemption day for those Leicester City players. If I was Brendan, I'd put the same 11 starting 11 out and saying, go and prove the fans wrong. Because these fans have travelled up on a midweek night, probably left, left work early. They've travelled up in the dark and the wet and probably the rain. To watch you 
you go and you earn their respect again because you lost it all at the weekend and this is redemption for Leicester. However, it's going to be it's going to be a big ask. Yeah, a very big ask. So I'm going to have to go for another I'm going to go for another draw in the hope that this team actually show some balls and show up. See, and I can't really go against my team. You know what I mean? That's the see. The thing is, I was I was thinking here. I'm going to start making predictions with my head and not my heart when it comes to Leicester. And I was sitting there before we even started thinking, I'm going to have to go Liverpool. We've got an awful record at Anfield. It's one of the hardest grounds for us to go to and, and, and fetch anything from it. Uh, when we do beat Liverpool, it, it, it kind of feels like when we play Man City, they're, they're kind of in the same boat. If we ever tend to beat them, it's more times than not. It's at Leicester, it's at the King Power instead of there. But if I remember rightly, when we played Liverpool, we were expecting a beating. I stuck by the guns and backed Leicester and we ended up winning 1-0 with Ndidi as centre-back. Yeah. So, using that logic, I'm going to go for Leicester to win this game uh, and and cross everything and hope for the best, in, in total honesty. That that trend continues with me going against my uh, head for this one and sticking with my heart, and then I will forever stop listening to my head at these fixtures. <laughs> I, I, I wish totally 100% agree with you, and I am... I am millimetres off having said a Leicester win. Um, had it, let's say, had it been against a Arsenal or a Tottenham or a West Ham, then I think I would have done. But the fact that it's Liverpool at Anfield, I just think it will, a win may be just a step too far. But if if we don't get a performance tomorrow. Then serious question. I mean, you know, Brendan's the favourite to be the next one to be axed. And I think, you know, we've agreed that, you know, that shouldn't happen because at the end of the yeah. day, you know, who who's going to be good enough to replace him? Um, and he, the best clubs, you know, they didn't sack Fergie when he went to season without winning anything because he won before and he won after. You've got to, you know, give him the time to put things right. So I don't think he should go. But if we don't get a performance tomorrow, I'm sorry, Brendan. Drop them and play the kids. Play the kids. I really would. Uh, I'm going to put Steve down as voting for Wolves to beat Arsenal. <laughs> I think that's another given one, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah most um, definitely. This, I don't know which way this is going to go. I mean, Wolves, mate, are fat in eight. They've not lost in five. They beat Brighton. They drew with Chelsea. They beat Man United. Um, they beat Wolves. Oh, no, hang on a second. Wolves beat Southampton, oh. sorry. Um, and they beat uh Brentford. And then you've got who are they playing? Did I say Arsenal? Arsenal yes. actually in sixth. They had a bit of a run under um, under Arteta. The wheels were on the wagon and they they, they beat Watford 4 1. Um, they beat Crystal Palace 3 2. Norwich 2-0, so you could say a couple of those should have been wins anyway. Um, they lost to Leeds. No, they didn't. I've gone up one again. Sorry. They lost to Man City, which again, you know, maybe is a given. And they, But they could only draw with Burnley 0-0. How do you see this one? I'm going to gladly sit in the same boat as Steve in this one because I just do not see Arsenal getting anything from this game. They've completely capitulated their squad. And unlike other clubs that have got rid of the dead weight, got rid of the excess, they have like 12 players available. I don't know if they've got the update, but you can't just get a game postponed for having 12 players available. You need a better reasoning than that now. So I don't know what's gone on there. They, 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 they made wholesale releases and wholesale loans and wholesale... I don't even, did they actually sell anybody in that market? I don't know, but... Hmm. Wolves look an impressive unit. They're dark horses. They're quietly going about their business. No one's really talking about them. More mur hmm. They're more murmuring about them. They're getting a mention, but they're, they're quietly going unnoticed under the radar, which is yeah. how we tend to go and how we actually prefer it as fans of clubs like that. So, yeah, I'm going to say Wolves actually probably win this comfortably. 
I've gone for Wolves as well. Um, I think Arsenal have, have possibly peaked, and I don't think they could, they're going to have as good a second half as they did first half of the season. Like you say, they, they, they were moaning that they've got no players, and then they were sending players out on loan and and, and all that. I mean, it, what a farce! Do you know what I mean? What a farce! So. And if they get injuries and they haven't got the players to to, to bring into substitute, what well, they're going to be sat with no bench. Um, yeah. I, I, I've got to, and for the reason that I, I, I think I would prefer Wolves to be Arsenal because it would do us a favour. But um, yeah, I've got to I've got to go for Wolves as well. So there we go. We missed out on the Burnley game. Um, oh no, we haven't. No, when's Burnley play? Oh no, that was on Saturday, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he yeah, so, did that at the start, yeah. and I said I was going to bet all my points on that. Uh... That's right, yeah, yeah. Um, I put that in there because I wasn't sure when we were going to be doing the show, but uh, but they decided to sort of play it early. But um, yeah, a few draws we've gone for there. I've got one, two, three, four draws. You've got two. Um, between us, we've got we've got a cabinet, which is more than they've got in number ten. But uh, that is the um, that is. The midweek games, all of them are on BT Sport, um, so all of them can be watched. I may, because it went quite well. Well, the score didn't go quite well, but the watch along went quite well. So I'm, mm, do I do a watch along or not? We shall no. see. No. <laughs> it's actually no. bad luck. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Well, you, you you may have a point. You may have a point there. But uh, right, we're going to be right back after this and we're going to have a look at the weekend's games. Watch us on YouTube. Listen on your favourite podcast platform. Or ask your smart speaker to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. Subscribe, like, follow and join in now. Right, so we're off to the weekend and the early kickoff. On BT Sport, I tell you what I'm going to do. Before we even go any further, I'm going to put an S next to Wolverhampton Wanderers, and I am. Going to... <laughs> <laughs> um, where are where the? I don't, I, don't I, got... I don't think they've got a game. To be honest with you, no, I don't think they have. No, they've not. I can't see one there. No, um, I mean that could be me. <laughs> but I don't think Arsenal actually have a game. I'm sure somebody will tell me in uh, in 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 the uh, in the in the comments. If not, um, I think there was only nine games. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will find out. Um, so, Brad, let's have a look then. Uh, Man United hosting Southampton for the early early kickoff on the Saturday. Uh... I'm, I'm just going to get this done now. Draw. I just can't see Man United winning the next couple of games, to be honest with you. I, Southampton are mm. a good side. And, um, yeah, I just I just don't see them getting a point. Totally, totally agree with you. I'm just checking this Arsenal game, by the way. There's so many games. There's about 20 games where the dates to be confirmed. It is ridiculous. Um, so this is Saturday the 12th, Sunday the 13th. Nope, they have not got a game. Because the next game on the Tuesday after that is actually Man United. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So unless the Premier League website have made a bit of a cock up. <laughs> that uh, Arsenal have got a weekend off. No, I, I actually think Luke, I think I remember it was yesterday or whenever it was on a stream. Luke did mention that they have they don't have a game at the weekend, which is baffling them because I think they they obviously have games in hand. Yeah, yeah. You'd have thought. Well, you know, you know, we're relying on the Premier League to to get things right, which is a big ask, really. So you've gone for the draw. Do you know yeah. what? Do you know what? I I am gonna have I'm gonna have one of these moments. Tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. Because I'm gonna go for Southampton. I think that's you, know, you know, like we've said, you know, Manchester United, this should be a home banker, but I it's South you know, it's the way they are at the moment. And Southampton, you know, that it could go either way with Southampton, but I just have a feeling 
it, there's something about going to, to 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 Old Trafford, isn't there? It gets you know your your shackles up, and you want to sort of go well and and win there. So I, I'm going to go for Southampton. Interest in this one, next one, Brad Brentford Crystal Palace. Um, I mean, it, obviously this this could depend on the result beforehand. You might be looking at yes, yeah, so, yeah. looking for a response. Brentford will want to probably try and do something after the Man City game. Uh, and I'm just going to give the... Uh, this is what I mean. I know I just said that they're kind of suffering from Sheffield United-itis, but mm. I, um, I I am expecting Brentford to probably bounce back from this result. So are you going for a Brentford win? Brentford, Brent, Brentford win, mate. Oh, this... I hate these games where there's... I mean, it's good, but there's just like... Not an obvious winner, you know what I mean? Oh, oh. Um, again, you know, if it was at Palace, I, I'd, I'd be very, very confident in going for Palace. Um, but I do totally agree with what you say. Brentford are going to start, you know, if they, if they don't win, which we don't think they will um, against Manchester City, they're going to have to get something, you know, out of these games because they are hovering quite close to that that bottom bit. Um, I'm going to go for a draw. Or am I going to go for a Brentford win? Oh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's difficult. It's difficult. Um, let's go for a draw, and then I'm different to you. As, as many people have often said, we are we are different in many ways. Um, that, that's one way of looking at it, mate, yeah. Yes, yes. probably the fact that you're good-looking and I'm not. Everton leads United. This is going to be interesting. Um, I'll go first on this one because, again, we've got a resurgent Everton. They've made... Yes, you've got a, a Frank Lampard in, and I think Frank Lampard could be, as with Gerard, a good manager, you know, a good English manager moving forward. He did okay at Chelsea. I think had it been at any other club other than Chelsea, he would have actually... Um, I don't think he should have been sacked, um, but you know he, he did enough to get them where they were. I know he struggled the following season, but he's made some good, astute signings, and that's the thing, you know. I mean, um, who's the guy he's got for Man United? Um, I don't know, Van der Bench. I mean, Van der Beek. Yeah, no, that's him. Yeah, Van der Bench. I mean, what a, to get him on loan, you know. I mean, what a Man United thinking, letting him go to another. Premier League team, but hey, I, I'm going to go for an Everton win on this one. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna join you. I think they'll resurgent after their big, comfortable FA Cup win. Uh, I think obviously they'll get the result at the midweek, and then, and I think they'll continue in a nice little form. It was probably one of them that we thought on the Rafa they would go down, but in this one, they don't look like it. No, everybody's dooming. Dooming and looming. Doing all the calculations for us, isn't he? He is, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, you, you've got, got us down from 14th to 16th. Well, we have us in the, we have us in the relegation zone by the time we, we finish. Um, I mean, let's be honest with you, we can't ignore the fact that as we drop down towards that zone, that was Ranieri's downfall, you know. Um, okay. But I just, as long as he keeps us up, I think he's going to be given another season. Um, right, Brighton hosting Watford. I, I'm going to go for Brighton here because um, I just think Watford are down. And I, and I think as, as getting Roy in, uh, et cetera, um, I think it's too, 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 too late. I really think it's too late for them. And I think Brighton... Will get back into winning ways. They've got an absolutely superb manager there who's going to be just waiting for the England job to come up and, and it's his shoe on in. Um, and the sun shines out his bottom, of course, every time he bends down. But I do, I do think Brighton, for me, they're going to have too much for Watford and I'm going for a Brighton win. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be. Mm tight and it'll be a frustrating game but I just think that you know I think going forward especially if the supply is good to him I think Neil Mopay um, 
you know, can be clinical yeah. and, and, and can help out of a jam. Uh, I know um, Watford have um, that Dennis who looks a real hot shot, but I think if you're putting them head to head and their overall strength and the sides, I think this is going to be a nitty gritty game that Brighton yeah, probably take it late on. So I'm I'm joining you in saying that um, Brighton will edge this one. Indeed. Now the next game, you've, you've got Norwich's two newest fans presenting this show. <laughs> But they're not going to beat Man City, are they? No, no, they're not. I, I'm giving them enough credit by giving them four wins in a row and, and getting some points on the board. But I, I I think they'll frustrate them and you'll maybe, maybe get to half time thinking, oh, oh, well, maybe they might cause the upset. It's only 1 0, you never know. And then they'll get caught out. But yes, yeah, Man City winning this. They, 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 well, they, they, they really should do because. If they don't, this is the only way they're going to open that door back up for for, for Liverpool. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, for me, Man, Man, Man City should win this comfortably. Total agreement with you. My God, we've agreed for three in a row. What's, what's going on here? Um, Burnley again at home. Um, hosting Liverpool. It just... I mean, if you're a Burnley fan, I'm sorry, you've got to look at this and... All right, they might get something against against Man United because it, it Man United the form they're in at the moment, but then it's Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, it's like oh my, it's like it's like that film Zulu, isn't it? You know, you get oh. rid of one one team out of the way, you look up, oh, it's Liverpool for bloody hell, give us a break. Um, I think this this run of games here could be the death knell for Burnley. What do you think? Would you, would you agree with that or? I'm I mean, it could be, but then they're playing a Manchester United team that are a bit frail on form at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So to get something there, especially if they get all three points, uh, they'll come into this game full of confidence. Um, you'd feel as well that if Mane and Salah are, are maybe lacking a bit from the, the AFCON because they got all the way to the final, you know, yeah. Salah, Salah's still waiting for a penalty. Um, but <laughs> uh, you would feel that you know he's Klopp if he needs to, um, he'll they'll they'll be back in the team by that point anyway. If they're for whatever reason not playing against us, um, mm. I'd assume they'd have enough time and to get back into the squad and whatnot to, yeah. to, to, to play against us anyway. But if for the off chance they don't, then um, um, yeah, I unfortunately I think one way or another this will be a step too far for Burnley. So I am going to say that Liverpool come out on top uh, of this game. I think if they're going to get a bonus three points from this sort of side, it has to be against United for me, Burnley, not not yeah. going into the game hoping to get a bonus three points or yeah. or something. And, and again, surprise, surprise, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. You know, I think, I think we're looking at Burnley. Yeah, I just think, I'm sorry, Burnley, this is the season you go down. And I think come, at, come the end of February, you know, I know you've got the three games in hand, but I can't see you winning your games in hand. You've won one game. We are halfway through the season and you've won one game. You know, that, you know, you're only, you're only above Derby on points because you've drawn more than they managed to. So I'm sorry, Burnley and Liverpool. It could end up being a cricket score. I mean, I know Burnley are defensive and, you know, the, the, it's a horrible place to go to, etc. But I think Liverpool will have too much for them. Now then, Newcastle, Aston Villa. Oh, punch this... ups and draws. That's what happens yeah. when these two meet, don't they? And Newcastle fight amongst themselves infamously, don't they? Yes, they do. They do indeed. Uh, I honest again, I'm still not impressed by Newcastle. Going off my prediction from the midweek game, I don't care that it's on that St James's Park. Um, I'm 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 just gonna I'm just gonna say that Stephen Gerrard will probably take a point from this game. Though I think if, if Newcastle kind of get themselves into a lead and they get it level, that, that he'll shut mm. up shop. So for that reason, I am gonna sit on the fence. But I, it was I was torn between Villa winning or drawing. I wasn't even looking at Newcastle for this. 
<laughs> oh God, honestly, we might as well, you and me might as well just get married, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Because so I, I was enough. going exactly the same. Um and if that was at Villa Park, I'd have Villa down as the win, definitely. Um, but I think the fact that it is at um Newcastle. They got. I mean, it is an amazing crowd that they've got. Uh, somebody did say in in a, in a thread earlier that Sunderland were bigger than Newcastle. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, oh, they make more noise, but uh, no, I, I, um, yeah, I think I think I can see Villa nicking it, but I think it will be a draw. I do honestly do. Uh, Steve, yes, Chris. Wolverhampton Wanderers go to Tottenham. Who do you think are going to win? Oh, it's got to be Wolverhampton Wanderers. I thought you'd say that. So, Steve's gone for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, I've gone mad. Um, <laughs> 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 which way are you going on this one? I think it'll be a good game. I think Wolves have been very energetic this season. They've been very difficult to score against. And they've just seemed to... You know, it was only about a month or two ago you were saying that they don't concede a lot, but they don't really score a lot. And now they seem to have found the ability to score a few, a couple of goals every so often in the game. Uh, unfortunately, I think the old Wolves will return in, 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 in the sense of they won't take their chances in this game. But I do, I, I think my disdain for Spurs ever since that 3 2 defeat is continuing. And I, I'm going to sit on the yeah. fence because I, whilst I don't see them losing the game, I just can't say Spurs win it. So, yeah, I will sit on that fence. Well, I'm going to disagree with you. It's about time. Yeah, my disdain for Tottenham runs deeper than yours. <laughs> and, um, and that, that I know it was, I know it was a, you know, I don't mind losing, but not that, that, that just hurt. That just hurt so much. Um, I, I just wonder if Conte's magic has run out. Um, I just, I think I can just see it'll be a tight game, like we've said with a few of the oh. others, but I am going to go for a Wolverhampton Wanderers win. Well, I hope you're right. I'll give you that point if it happens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Give me that point if I'm right, because I'd get the point anyway, because I'm right. Yeah, exactly, exactly, mate. You know, you know. Yeah. The late match on Sunday. Ah, Leicester City. Um, host West Ham United, who actually gave us a trouncing on uh at the start of the season. And I've got Jake, yeah, Jake from West Ham, uh unofficial on the preview show on Friday. Um, I'm not looking forward to that. At least it's not the review show afterwards, although who knows. Um, I am worried. Uh, I'm not. And here's why. I've been saying for the past two months that West Ham keep dropping points against teams they should really beat and that are struggling. And they probably really should beat us and we really are struggling. So I think we're going to win it. I don't know why, but I think something's going to happen in that Liverpool game. It's either going to be a crazy double over Liverpool we complete and then all of a sudden the youngsters are in and they get the result against Liverpool and they win it. Or we're going to see Rodgers just start throwing three or four names out the team sheet all together and we're going to, you're going to get your wish and, and less fans might get their wish that those that wear the shirt and want to wear the shirt are wearing that shirt on a match day and we go out there and, and pick up three points against West Ham. So, yeah, I'm... I'm Going to back my team. I like West Ham. So do I. But I don't. You know, I'd love them. I'd love it. I'd love it. I'd love West Ham to actually do the Leicester this season, and I think they're the most likely to. Um, I do worry about their injuries. Um, like us, they've got a lot of games coming up because they've got Europe and. Um, is there another international break at the end of the month? Because I think there's another weekend when there's no no games on. But I have no idea, mate. I just I don't know with this one. My first my heart says Leicester. Oh. But it's the first home game after the Forest debacle. And yeah. if 
if those players aren't shitting themselves with fear as they walk out onto that pitch, something is wrong. Um, and if they do not, you know, Liverpool, if we lose to Liverpool, obviously it'll be disappointing. We've proved that we can beat them. But it's kind of, you could kind of say, well, it's Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Uh, this is West Ham. This is West Ham at home. Um, I also just quickly want to say as well, I think the fans are not the idiots and hooligans that wanted to trash Nottingham and, and run onto no. the pitch. The actual proper Leicester fans, they, and I, I know I know it might sound like it shouldn't be such an importance on it, but when we've been in bad form before, you could feel the nerves in the crowd. They were silent. They were, yeah. uh, they were watchful, I think is the best way to put it. They were watchful and mindful of what's going to happen on the pitch. They really need to be that cauldron um, at the King Power, they really need to. Um, and I, I know people might say, Oh, wow, the bloody players getting paid, whatnot, they shouldn't need motivating. But sometimes, when you know you're on the back of it, you don't want to go out and play in front of 30 or 1,000 fans, and they're just like, meh, meh. You want to hear them encouraging you to show your damn yeah. worth and play with a bit of pride for the club that you're playing for. So and it's that cold man, good. isn't it, as well? You yeah, know, it is, it is. you know, we you know, in any job, you know, if somebody comes up behind you and goes, you know, you, you're designing something, and they come up and go, Well, that looks really good. You think, Oh, thank you. You know, it's, it gives you that boost, and, and the crowd are going to get behind Leicester. Um, if it goes wrong, I don't think anything will happen until the end of the game when we might see a little bit of booing, but during the game, they will be behind West Ham. Uh, sorry, behind Leicester, sorry. And I think they will make an unbelievable noise. And I think you've convinced me I'm going to agree with you and I'm going to go for a win for Leicester. Um, Dorco, uh, you definitely had last half, half empty tonight, mate. Only three points between Leicester in 10th and Leeds in 15th. Trouble is Leicester will get no points in their next two games. And Terry agrees with you where we've got them getting four points so you know oh no you've got them getting you've got them two wins haven't you well i have um, i've got us on the miracle turnaround mate yeah i mean are we ending up and i appreciate i'm going to try and be as quick as i can because i appreciate you've got to go because you've got another um uh, stream to get to but just want to leave this with this are we as leicester fans becoming um too um Sorry, Steve actually is just um, is just um, has just sub uh, messaged me. They had a family mer uh, emergency, oh, so that's all right, that, all right, Steve. Yeah, we hope everything is all right. Um, just bear me. I'm just going to message him back. Um, hope all is well from me and Brad. Yeah, cheers, that mate. Um, can talk tomorrow. Re predictions, if you want. Well, I don't know. So I don't think you'd be watching, mate. But family, as I've always, always said, family always comes first. Um, without a doubt, without a doubt, family always come first. Um, Terry says here. I mean, he says I think the fans are angrier than you perhaps realise. We are angry, and I think, um, but during that 90 minutes, they let that get... anger out, let that anger out, yeah, and, you know, really roar them so they feel confident that they can drive forward at Liverpool, uh, at, at Liverpool when you're at Anfield, and, and and really let them know when they're when when they're up against the backs up against the wall that they need to try harder. There's no yeah. point sitting there as fans, you know. Being mer, mer, if Liverpool get an early goal or we're nil nil or one nil down against yeah. West Ham, you I remember days and end even back way back in the Championship and League One days. All oh, right, granted League One it didn't happen all that often. It was a brilliant season. Let's face it. But when we went a goal behind, you heard the crowd cheering as if they were egging them on to get a second goal, as if we were the team one up. And if you do that as fans and and you turn that frustration in, in, in into raw emotion directed at the team in, in, in a positive light and yeah. especially with certain changes that might potentially happen we don't know but 
you might then just see the response that you're after, you know. And if you mm. do that right, then, you know, the fans, 99.9% of the time, yeah. do their job perfectly for Leicester. I'm not having a dig at any fan. I'm not meaning it to come across. Excuse me, come across like that. Bless you. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that what, came uh, up that end. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but yeah. If if you take that out and 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 turn that frustration into a voice of cheer and and yeah. really determine the lads to 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 keep pushing and going, then you may find the knock on effect of that is from the performance on the pitch. And and and, and I. Oh, we run this. We run this channel, mate, and we get angry. We have the rants and we have the moans, and we say that somebody should not be wearing the shirt because they've had a bad game. And you're a fan, and you are allowed to love your club, and you are allowed to say if things go wrong. But while they're on that pitch, fans will get behind the players because being against the players will not have any effect at all. Yes, let's say we lose both games. They may boo at half-time. They may boo at full-time. But while that ball is in play, I think the fans will totally be behind the team. My worry is that as fans of Leicester, we are starting to... And I felt I was becoming a little bit of a Man United fan in as much as, well, we finished fifth two seasons running. That's where we should be this season. Yeah, I, I totally get what what yeah. it is, and, and I understand that. I have, way. To, I don't, I have I don't... to literally, I have to wobble my head and say, "Well, hang on a minute, that was two exceptional years and mid-table." Yeah. And, and, and and let's also remember, probably one of the club's most successful. Uh, oh, okay, I, I'll reword what I was about to say. That our successful, our most successful year since the dawn of the Premiership. Or the Premier mm. League, or whatever you want to refer to it as, because that's remember it is still it was originally the Premiership. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, our most successful period, we were very, very happy and very, very content with and doing backflips over League Cup finals and ninth, tenth, eleventh place yeah. finishes. Yeah. We are in no different. Just because times move forward, we're still no different in our ambitions. We should still lay the foundations that you know we we. Remember that certain, not going to mention the, you should not be named, but that certain times that we were in, we were top of the league. We, we ended up third and then we had that cup game and we know what happened. We dropped out. Yeah. We still finished really well, but we, we had that one-off season and all of a sudden we felt like Leicester were going to fly next season. We're, they're going to sort it out and we all know what happened. But the point still stands that if we do this this season, like you said, if we get to next season, even if we finish 10th, do fans go, well, that's not good enough. No, it needs to go, rah, rah, rah. And then the owners cave and they, they mm. see it from the fans' point of view and they sack him. Or do the, the owners agree with Brendan and go, well, no, we finished two, three places off our expectation. We put so much effort into it. Um, This is his first, re- we, you know, he's had to spend two seasons, four seasons, not rebuilding a side, but mm. adding depth to the side. You know, we, we we haven't been able to go out and say, Brendan, you want to get rid of X, Y, and Z. And I'm not saying this is the case. I'm just pointing out there. But, you know, he, he's not been given the opportunity to maybe get rid of some players that he doesn't feel cut the grade or or have hit a glass ceiling. You know, I haven't hit the, I've hit the glass ceiling with Leicester as far as their career's gone by the words he stated after the Watford game, uh, the Forest game, that he hasn't been able to get rid of maybe everybody that he wanted to because he's had to build our depth. And, and maybe next season, because things have been a bit more financially easier for the owners, still bad, but better, mm. that maybe they're going to have the ability to get rid of them players and still bring in three or four signings to strengthen it. And then next season, that, that standard gets up and, and, and we're back yeah. up there a little bit. Maybe not mm. fourth, fifth and third, but maybe fifth, sixth, seventh sort of area. Yeah. I mean, Terry says there we are. Yes, I, 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 say I have to stop myself yeah. sounding like... Uh, yeah, exactly. an Arsenal fan, and I know I was starting to sound like an Arsenal fan because I did get into that trap of well, we, we were fifth, we should be this season. Um, yeah, but we've got to, you know, we we've won the league once, we've won the FA Cup once, and we've won the Charity Shield once this this century, if you like. So we're not suddenly Manchester City. We're not suddenly Manchester United, and. You know, look at Everton. You know, look at these clubs. Look at Arsenal's and the Tottenham's. They they have seasons when it 
when it struggles. Dorco says here, the players only care about their pay packet. Well, part of that pay packet is a bonus for winning. And will be <laughs> yeah, a it's, bonus. It's, it's, well, Dorco, I, 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 I'll ask this to you. If, if their only interest is in their pay packet, they're, they're in a very unique line of... <laughs> Sorry, two seconds. They're, they're in a unique. Um, no, that wasn't line what I work. thought it was. It's only like you unzipping your. You're not in the toilet, are you? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, but uh, sorry, I was just going to get something from outside. I wonder what that was. Um, no, it, you know, they're in a unique position where, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, a guy could never play a game for Leicester, but it'd be contracted to three years and, and, and um, he'll get paid his basic wage. But mm. you're saying they're there for a pay packet. But their pay packet, they're hired to play football. And, you know, the, the only way a club stops paying them their wage is when they stop playing football at a standard that's enough. And unfortunately, you know, it's easy to say they're not earning that. They're, they're, they're just here for the money. But we we go to work to earn the money. We don't go... Yeah. We don't go I'm sure there's people out there that don't go hop, skipping and jump into their jobs every week because they're very happy to always be there and always be at their best. They yeah. they probably go for a week or a month and going oh god I just can't wait for payday so I can get out of this place for, for yeah. the weekend yeah Absolutely. and who, no, I mean, who well, hasn't thrown a sickie you know and, and still exactly. got paid for that day you know and I I'm in sales and I've gone and sometimes and if you're not in the mood for sales it's the worst place to be because you've got to try and be upbeat and cheerful and you're not. And you just you do get days. I mean, Terry says here, uh, no loyalty from the players. Um, back to no no loyalty from the players. Back to the club and fans. Not all, but a few like Cags and Yuri don't want to be here. I mean, you say no loyalty from the players. It's a job. It is a job. Did any of that current squad go? Do you know what? My ambition in life is to play for Leicester. Luke Thomas. That's probably the only one. Everybody else, it's a job to them. Why should they have loyalty to Leicester? We're paying their wage. They are doing a job. They've won us the FA Cup. They've won us the um, uh, Charity Shield or the English Super Cup. Yeah. You know, um, you know, Yuri, say, yeah, yeah, Yuri doesn't want to be here because he wants to um, go and... Um, and progress and play for, unfortunately, and let's be honest, a bigger and better team. Yuri is, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, he's, he's a hell of a lot better than Mares. When Mares wanted to leave, Mares was camped out at Charles de Gaulle Airport waiting for his agent to call. We don't see that yeah. off Yuri. Yuri's saying, right, I want to see where we are at the end of the season. And we're talking to Man United fan, and I'm going to be honest with you, would he go to Man United? And I said, if you don't get Champions League football, no, you won't. You know, no, I don't think. Oh, I don't think he does. I mean, personally, I never want to see him play in another Premier League I shirt. Don't. So I'd, I rather don't. Go, you know. I'd rather him go to. I'd rather him go to Real Madrid than yes. than, than oh, Chelsea. Totally. Or, totally, one hundred percent agree with you, Brad. But I say there's no loyalty bit. I know. I know what you're saying, Terry. But like I say, why should they have loyalty to Leicester? You know, well, they, um, they, have, they have to look after their own ambitions. At the end of the day, yes. if they same in business, mate, you could turn around and, and turn around to a business and and, and then a, a bigger business, a more advanced business, see how well you've been doing. You know, they send yeah. people to track your things or whatever, however they do it. And they they, 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 they they hand pick you out of the group and they say, look, we are, rec I don't know, say something hypothetical. They say, um, they say their recruitment policy is, we can't hire anybody for the next three months, mm. uh, but we, we we're going to offer you like a you know if you want to take the job, it's yours. We we will we'll, we'll even give you an official start date, blah blah blah. And you turn around to your boss and say, "Look, I've been offered a great opportunity, um, but the, I, 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 the job starts in three months because that's when they're able to take on." I am happy here. I'm happy to keep working here, and I'm going to give you 100 percent like I always have. You, you know. Uh, you you appreciate that more than a player mm. like Maris does what he does, and and, and people yeah. people are easy. And I, I've been saying this for a few weeks, but it must be. The, I know it's cold out, but the media must love fishing at us lot fans sometimes because they're just sat there going, 
You're a cinema since signed a new contract. Leicester lost. Well, hey, Tillemans wants to leave. He doesn't want yeah. to play for Leicester. Go on, eat it, eat it, eat it. And you lot just go. Nom, 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 nom. Like I say, do on. go on to the BBC iPlayer, search the football news show, and I, I am saying what I'm saying here, which is yeah. it's not all all bad. I mean, you know, you could be on it right. Um, you've got a point there, Terry. Forest were a team, we were 11 individuals. We did not play as a team. I will accept that. Um, legends in their own mind, I don't think so. And in Dorco, they don't want to play for a bigger or better team. They'd want, just want a bigger pay packet, don't you? Dorco, well, well, I don't know how okay. old you are, Dorco. Okay, sorry, sorry, Chris. I'll, I'll yeah. refer you back to my point, right? Okay, let's just say, let's just say, Brad's computer. I say I started a business, right? Brad's internet business.com. I don't, I can't think of names. I'm so original, right? And I paid an employee, I don't know, 20, 15 pound an hour, right? Yeah. And then he, he got a offer from Google that we're going to pay him 15 pound an hour. But because there's such a business that they guarantee him that the more he succeeds, he's going to get a 50 pound bonus mm. per signed up customer, he's going to get this, he's going to get that, and then he turns around to me and goes, look, the maximum wages, I really want to believe in your project, but also at the same time, I have to say, Google are a massive company, they've got massive ambitions, they're a massive, well-known company, they're off me this, and I go, you know there's no way I can match that, I, I just have to let you go, yeah. and I, you know, I wish you all the best at, at Google, um, and then maybe in the future, that, that when I've got bigger, you might consider coming back and you leave on good terms. And yeah. it's not everybody, again, you're jumping to the same bang. That's got to be the reason they're going, no. Yeah. We've had wanna, this before. I want to quote, where... quote my yeah. daughter if I can, because she's yeah. she just finished college. Uh, and the back end of last year, she got a job. She's an architect. So she's not in a job. She's still got to do her master's. But she signed up for this. She works in London. She signed up for this big... Um, uh, company website was amazing, uh, but it was not quite what she was, you know, her sort of architecture that she was doing, but it was a job, etc. Two days before she was due to start, another company came in and offered her a job. Mm. Not quite as much money, but then there wasn't the traveling involved, but it was more what she wanted to do. And at the end of the day, players will got to look after themselves. It's their career. I know. I mean, and Dork, I'm just going to come back to you on this one. Have you never left a job? Are you? And I don't know how old you are, Dorco, but are you still working for the same company that you worked for when you left school? And have you never left that job? Have you never left a job? The right. reason most people leave a job is promotion, which is more money, or more money. You know, I left. I left my job after ten years to go to another company because they offered me more money. <laughs> the guy was offering more money, and, and I'm thinking, like, God, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I I don't get this. The fact that you know they are, what, you know, what have they got to be loyal for, and a hundred percent every single day terry and i'm not i'm not arguing like i say we, we, we're talking it's all about opinions there must have been days and i know i've got my hand up that there were days when i went in when i was on sales and i took the piss i'd sit oh. there and i'd dial companies that i knew wouldn't answer and they went to answer phone but it was a call that i'd made and yeah you know, the and uh, we, we all have days like that, so you can't give 100%, 100% of the time. I don't care. Um, they may not have loyalty to Leicester, but they need to have a passion and integrity when you join any team. It doesn't matter the team you play your heart out for, not a one look like they tried yesterday. One, like I can say, I accept that. I accept that yeah. you know it was a bad result. It was a bad game, but... I mean, if you want to nip off, sorry, by the way, Brad, because I know you've got another, you know, another stream. And I'm, Are you sure, just, mate? You know. Sorry? Are you sure if I just nip off? Yeah, is that yeah, because, yeah, this has gone on, oh. I think, longer, so I can carry yeah. on. Um, thanks, thanks just, for having just, us on, mate. Uh, yeah. I always appreciate it. Steve's going to get no points. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all, 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 all the best, Steve. I hope everything's all right. And uh, I'll leave you to your, your, your Boris Johnson meeting with the uh, comment section. Keep going, guys. <laughs> Keep it going. Cheers. Cheers, mate. All the best, Brad. Thanks very yeah. much. Cheers, mate. Bye. Um...
Terry, you know, you left for more experience. So if a player leaves Leicester City and goes to Barcelona, goes to uh, Manchester City, they're getting more experience because they're going to be playing in the Champions League. Um, at this point, I was just making there before Brad went. Um, yeah, they, they, like I say, yesterday it was awful. There's no getting away from it. It was bloody awful yesterday. And they deserve to get the bollock in that hopefully Brendan Rodgers will have given them. Um, now, off says here, Rodgers in, out or in. You know, it's it's starting, it's growing. The rumours and the discontent for, for Brendan is going. Um, I do honestly think, like I say, that these these players are the players that got us fifth two seasons running, won us an FA Cup, won us the Charity Shield. You've got to take into account, right, I'm just going to go through the list of defenders that were injured this season. At some point, some of them all season, some of them part of the season, etc. Uh, in fact, I've, I've even um, I've missed one off. Bertrand, Vestergaard, Evans, Fafana, Soyuncu, Castagna, Ricardo, Justin. At some point of the season, we have totally had eight of our defenders, which I think is basically every single defender at the club, out. So when you come to play, you are playing with probably somebody next to you that you've not played with before. And so you put a ball through, and we've seen it, you know, when Vardy came off and then Acho used to come on, people would put the ball through thinking, oh, Vardy's going to be under that. Oh, Vardy's not here. And Acho plays a different way. And, you know, you haven't got that understanding um, because, you know, the, in that championship winning year, you know, we had Morgan, Fuchs, Huth, Simpson, they were starting every single game, barring injury or barring whatever. But nine times out of ten, it was that was the back four, and they knew, you know, they knew if they put a ball there that somebody would be on the end of it. You haven't got that with the defenders at the moment, you know. Um, I'm 63, and I'm the same as the Leicester players. I have no loyalty. We don't, like I say. I, I worked for my I worked for a, a paper down here and I worked for, for 10, 12 years after I moved down. They gave me the job. I left and I came for more money and it didn't work out and they took me back. And I still left again because of, of decisions of, of, of that I wanted to, to to try something different. And I was I was thinking of myself. I wasn't thinking about oh how will this affect the, the the paper? Oh, I might leave them in a bit of trouble. I was thinking about me, and that's all the players are doing. It is a job to them. Um, they get paid, says Terry, and the fans of the payees think they forget that the the fans pay towards the club. Um, I think if you add all the wages together, I'm not sure whether what the the the, the <laughs> whether that would add up to enough, I think probably top, etc. Does no pun intended top it up. Um, Terry says, Dorco, you are a bit younger than me. Seems values have changed in the modern times about loyalty. We'll leave it there. Like I say, Terry, why why should I mean a player when we sign him, a player should definitely, definitely give his all. And we know it is impossible to do that every game we know it is it is impossible and terry i respect what you're saying but there was days you wouldn't have given 100 percent. there was days when you felt a bit maybe hung over when you were younger maybe you just weren't at the races one day when you didn't quite give it your everything it happens look at the injuries like i say you know vardy now as well he's out for eight weeks a couple of seasons ago he'd have been back after four or five you've got to take this kind of into perspective. You know, Liverpool, Liverpool before Fergie, Liverpool were 30 years waiting to win the title again. We're talking about one season where we're not going to get fifth. One season where it's all going a little bit tits up. 
these players, Luke Young probably walks out of there every day. Kieran Dewsbury Hall. All those youngsters will walk out. And we proved it when they played Watford. The chest goes out. Oh, I'm playing for Leicester, my team. And, uh, and they showed the, the full-timers up. They said, Well, they say the full-timers. You know, the, the, they showed the first team players up. They did. Um, so that I can question. I can question the fact that, um, it, it, you know, the, the fact that, that they're not giving them all, all of the time. But the loyalty, there is no loyalty. You know, if if you know, when does the club tell me when the club shows any loyalty? Were we loyalty loyal to Ranieri? He won us the bloody title. We sacked him six months later. Where was the loyalty from the club? The clubs don't show any loyalty. The clubs try to get their penny of meat out of the players. And if, if there's a sales good, if you know a manager will come in and go, oh, I don't like the look of you, you don't fit into my system. I'm gonna try and get you out of the team, I'm gonna try and sell you somewhere else. It's got loyalty that has to work both ways, and there is no loyalty from the clubs, and we should not expect it. It is a job to them. Um, David says here, um, how about a player like Cags, for example, when he plays with Evans, he's a world beater on his own, he completely forgets the script. Does that speak to a lack of passion, ability, talent, or initiative? I think it just sums him as a player up. And, you know, I, I will go back. I will go back when Man United pre-Ferguson, they would go out and buy every player going because they wanted the big names. They thought if they could by the big names, that they could go on and challenge Liverpool. They didn't. Liverpool were dominant. Liverpool were the Man United before Man United. You know, they were winning Europe every season, every other season. They were winning the league. Um, and <laughs> Man United would go out and buy these players, not because they fitted in with the team, but because they were a big name. You know, it's like... It's like when Arsenal wanted to buy Jamie Vardy, Jamie Vardy would not have fitted into that Arsenal team. He would have been stuck out on the wing like Roy Hodgson did him for England most of the time. And basically, bloody hell, Dan, have you finished your show already? <laughs> you know, you, 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 you don't buy players just because of the players. You don't play a player just because of who they are. If they don't fit into your current system, um, when you don't get, you know, uh, it, it fit into the manager's plans, you know, you don't pick them. You know, why aren't, you know, why aren't these players, oh, this player is the best player ever. England's not picking him. What's wrong? Well, maybe he doesn't fit into the manager's plans. There's no point having a, a brilliant player who doesn't fit in to the manager's plans. Um, and like I say, we have to get over this loyalty thing. You know, there's no loyalty in football, but the football clubs do not show loyalty to managers or to um, players at all. Um, I'm sorry. Hi, Nippon. Hi, Dan. Hi, Mike. I, I'm presuming Dan's chat is over. Um, Cags became pissed off with Leicester when they got rid of his mate under. Um, they certainly did. Um, and um, I might say certainly did. I, I don't know. I mean, he, he may have been upset, but you know, with, with Cags, yes, he plays well with Evans, and he'll probably play well with, with, with Fafana because they click, they go together again in any job, in any work that time. Um Terry, we we're not going to we're not going to agree on this, Terry. But you know, Benkovic in Scotland, the sun shone out of his ass for Rogers. He won a triple with him. He had him every week playing. Came down to the Premier League. He never got a look in. Why was that? Because you've. It, it, it maybe didn't fit in with the other players that he'd got, and he thought, "Oh, he's, he's, he's going to be a, a round peg in all these square holes." Um, Vardy stayed loyal 
did he? He was that close. If he was loyal, if he was loyal, Terry, he would not even have gone and spoken to them. But he went to see if he could get a better deal with Arsenal. And yes, he couldn't. And he decided to stay at Leicester. And yes, he's a big fish in a small pond at Leicester. It would have been a small fish in a big pond. But like I say, would he have got the service that he got uh, playing for Leicester when he was at Arsenal? No, because Wenger didn't play to that sort of style. And again, it was to say, it was just a case of, yeah, he scores goals, we need to sign him. Um, so I don't think, I, I don't think I could say loyalty. It, it's an old fashioned value. It is an old fashioned value. You can stay loyal to a company you work for, and then they come along and they've got to make redundancies. Do you really believe it's the first in, uh, last in, first out? No. No, it's the almost money first out. We've kind of gone off on a... T <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I'd love it. In fact, I'll tell you what. Let, us, uh, let me just play this. I'll tell you, honestly, I will love it if we beat them. Love it. I'll tell you... I won't play it again. It's okay. I love the fact that we've gone off onto this discussion. What I might do, actually, tomorrow is I might actually try and just sneak... Sneaked a little uh, a show in about the players and loyalty and what have you. I, I might do that tomorrow. But, you know, I just say, you know, I just think loyalty has gone out the window. There's no loyalty. My dad worked for the post office, uh, man and boy. You know, he came out of the Navy and he worked and he started out as a postman. That uh, was better than walking the, walk the streets, I guess. But <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, and he got up and he was security officer, safety health and safety officer at the end. Um, you wouldn't get that these days. You wouldn't get anybody working for the same company for 40, 50 odd years now. It it doesn't happen because a half the time, let's face it, in the current economic climate, half the companies are going bust. I mean, yet, yeah, Terry, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Maybe we end in agreement. Loyalty is probably from a past era. I get totally 100% what you were saying, Terry. But, you know, when you look at the Leicester of old, you know, a lot of those players came, had come through the, you know, that the, they were local lads, you know, and, and they'd maybe, I think you do have a bit more loyalty, you know. It's like, you know, if I'm watching Leicester play Burnley, I want Leicester to stuff Burnley. Of course I do. If I'm watching... Manchester United play Norwich. Yeah, I want Norwich to win because they're the underdog. But am I bothered? No. And it's the same with players. Like I say, you know, Luke Thomas, he'll walk out with pride at every game because he's a local lad. That's the only one. No <laughs> other lad. It's a job to them. T who's also got a job, and that is Brendan Rodgers. And like I say, he needs he needs to get a tune out of them against Liverpool on Thursday. And if we lose, I will accept that we'll lose because it is Liverpool and the form that they're kind of in at the moment and where they are. But let us hope that we get a performance because what we got against Forest, if we'd have lost that 4-1 to Man City and we'd gone down fighting, you know, and we, we, we lost 6-3 but we were down and we got it back to three, great. We showed a bit of fight. That yesterday was totally and utterly embarrassing. I often say when we play well, it's like watching uh, Barcelona or Brazil. I tell you what, it was like watching Burnley that yesterday. We were totally and utterly played off the park. Um, uh, Dan says... Um, Take care, Terry. Yeah, we're both loyal to Leicester. We're fans. Fans will always be loyal. And that's why when I see these little clubs go out of business, and don't forget Leicester nearly went out of business, you can't just say, oh, Burnley have gone out of business. Uh, you know, Bur sorry, Berry have gone out of business. Then, you know, I'm going to go and support Oldham. It doesn't work. Mike, uh, take care anyway, Terry. All the best, mate. Uh, Mike, they need to play for the badge. Can you tell me how many Man United players are playing for the badge? Because I tell you what, Pogba doesn't. 
we know you know what a couple of the players play for. It certainly isn't the badge, is it? Um, so now there's there's no loyalty. It is a it is a job. I'd I'd probably say um, uh, a couple of the youngsters probably that are local will play for the badge, but. Maguire, he's always been a Man United supporter, so he, you know, he might play for the badge. Not necessarily playing very well, I grant you. <laughs> well, I will, I will grant you that. I will grant you that. But past that, who plays? Who's playing for the Man United badge? You know, <laughs> it's true though. It's true. Um, David, yes, and, and, and he is possibly. I, I would agree with you there. Um, Ronaldo is um, yeah. Terry, thanks for thanks for the conversation. It's all about opinions, and your opinion is completely as valid as anybody else's. Well, it might be apart from Mike and Dan, but uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, mate. And we'll see you later. Um, Harry Maguire, I think he is a Sheffield United fan, but I think he has some loyalty to Man United because he wanted to be captain. Or anyway, I don't know. I don't know. But um, Elanga, Rashford, Hannibal, CR7, most of the academy. Yeah, because they've come through. Like I say, you you know, Luke Thomas was loyal, you know, because he's born in Leicester. He's a Leicester lad. Kieran, um, K uh, KDH possibly as well. Uh, Pogba, you're telling me Pogba plays for the badge? Ronaldo, I've got to say, be honest with you, um, Ronaldo does because he is a perfectionist and he i mean we we i wish we'd got a ronaldo playing for us not that we could ever afford somebody with that ability but with that passion and that's what we haven't got our leader is the guy that stands in the goal <laughs> he's our captain he's our most vocal player and sometimes you know we had terry butcher as manager as, of england uh, you know, you've had Roy Keane as manager of Man United. Maybe you can't get those sort of, you know, those sort of players anymore. Maybe the players don't respond to that. Maybe they do respond to more of like a David Beckham. He was completely different when he became manager, um, manager when he became captain of Man United. But he approached it in a different way. So, you know, it, it's uh, it's how it goes. Um, <laughs> Turf said he needed a break from me. Right, well, you've come on, mate. You've come on. Um, and it is time to go. It really is. Um, I think you look at any club. You know how 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 many how many players have been playing for the badge at Everton? How many players have been playing for the badge at um, at uh, Burnley? You know, how many players have been playing for the badge at Man United? Uh, uh, you know, you can't, you can't demand loyalty if you can expect it. And I will give respect to Ronaldo because when he goes out, he gives 100% and he expects 100% off everybody else. Not necessarily the talent, but the 100% the in effort. And... Yeah, I wish we'd got a team of Ronaldo's. I'm sure Man United wish they'd got a team of Ronaldo's, let's be honest with you. But we move on. We move on. It happened. It is now down to Leicester to prove that they are right. We've got Liverpool on Thursday, as you know, guys. And you know what? That's up to the Leicester players. They've got to take the, the ball by the balls and say, right, we're going to go and we're going to prove to you. And, you know, if we get a draw, if we get a loss and we've gone down fighting then fine. We then got, like I say, West Ham United, and that really is a must-win game because that is winnable. And, you know, it's in front of the, it's the first home game after the debacle in the FA Cup, and they need to go out and they need to grow a pair, and those fans will be behind them for the 90 minutes that the ball is being kicked around the pitch, or if you're playing Spurs, of course, 97 minutes that the ball is being kicked around the pitch before or afterwards. And at half time, you've got to earn, you've got to earn the respect and the applause. That will be a, that will be a cauldron. That game, it's on, it's on Sky, and I'm really looking forward to watching for watching it because that will be a cauldron that that those Leicester players walk out into, and they have got to, got to step step up to the mark. 
If they do, and we still don't win, maybe it is Brendan with his tactics. Don't like the fact that he's coming out and playing, but we, we discussed that. I'm not going to get onto that again. Guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for... Um, thank you for... No, Mike, I didn't take the uh, flag off because we were in the final. It actually says we were in the final, and we were in the final, unlike Man United. Um, and so we, we did we did win it uh, more recently than, than Man United. In fact, I think we won most things more recently than Man United. <laughs> I'm going to be back to, on Wednesday with the preview show. We're talking to Doug, a Liverpool fan. And, um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I see what you mean. Um, honestly, everybody's a cricket, cricket, a cricket, a critic, aren't you? Honestly, uh, you know. Man United fans, this is all they've got to worry about, you see. Uh, see, there we go. They're happy now? <laughs> uh, it's because I'm still mourning. I'm still in mourning. That's the point. Tomorrow, I'm going to be 45 minutes of hell. I've got to go and do a watch along between Burnley and Manchester United. And it's one of those where, who do I want to win? Honestly, I couldn't give a toss. <laughs> who do I think will win? I think it could be a um, a, a boring nil nil because Man United are in such a mess at the moment. Um, you know, you haven't got a manager, um, and you know what, Burnley. I'm sorry, Dan, but as you've just said there, uh, <laughs> I think it's it, it, you'll be back. But I think it is. I think it is the end. Um, that's tomorrow. Uh, I'm on Turf Moor TV. Get over there and and follow me. And I'm sure I'll be giving them some stick, Mike and uh, Dan. At nine o'clock, I'm on um, Statsman TV channel, uh, previewing again the Liverpool game. And then on Wednesday, at seven o'clock, my channel here, Leicester Till I Die TV, um, previewing the Liverpool game. And at nine o'clock on the Dugout Football Channel, previewing the Liverpool game. It's <laughs> to be Liverpool, 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 uh, all it's going to be. Guys, it's been a long one, and it's been a long time since I've uh, had anybody say that to me, especially my ex-wife, but it has been a long one. Thanks for sticking with us, and um, we went completely off Skelter there. May do it again tomorrow, see how I feel. I may just have a lie-in tomorrow. I don't know, I'll be... Uh... <sighs> At least we don't have to talk about Nottingham Forest after tonight. <laughs> if you've been watching it, thank you so much for watching it. If you've been listening on Catch Up on Spotify, Apple iTunes, uh, and Google, and Podcast Addict, we're on all of those. We're on the Sports Social Network now as well. So if you search Sports Social Network, go onto the podcast. We're the only Leicester one on there, and that you can listen to us on there as well. This will be up there probably tomorrow now because it's late. Um, but thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for listening. And if, don't forget, merchandise, the shop is open, die slash. No, I'm wrong. It's late. com forward slash shop. And you'll see all the Leicester Till I Die merchandise. And uh, you'll be supporting the channel if you do purchase anything, uh, as indeed you will if you subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Oh, think of me tomorrow having to watch Burnley Man United. I think I'm going to watch paint dry. It's been a pleasure. Take care, and we'll see you. See you next time. Lester Till I Die podcasts on the Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Anchor, and all podcast platforms. The Leicester Till I Die shop is now open. For all your Leicester Till I Die merchandise, visit the Leicester Till I Die shop at our website. Thanks for watching Leicester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time. That's all,
the pitch, they think it's all over. It is now.